What is up my esteemed bastards? How have you all been? It has been such a long time since I did any sort of Yu-Gi-Oh commentary. And I'm not gonna lie, I kinda missed it. So, jumping any pleasantries aside, I want to get back into the Yu-Gi-Oh community. <laughs> For better or worse, I want to get back into it. I did miss it, and maybe I've been running up a lot of nostalgia for a lot of things recently, and I think it's time to come back, if anything for my own comfort, and if I can entertain a couple people along the way, that would be great also. I went to the anime and skateboard shop over in Southgate, Michigan, and I happened to stumble upon the first 73 episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, uh, Zale in the original Japanese. And I almost bought it, I'm not gonna lie. If I wasn't already holding $130 worth of other stuff, which includes a really nice, nice Attack on Titan hoodie, I would've bought it. And if it were 73 through the end, I definitely would've bought it. But anyway, what I'm gonna do in this series, and hopefully I can maintain it to get to some of the good stuff, is I'm just gonna episode by episode talk about each episode of Yu-Gi-Oh's Exile. If you know me from before, and if you know me at all, Yu-Gi-Oh's Exile is a show that's really close and dear to my heart, and it gets a lot of hate. It is my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh show of all time, followed probably shortly by Arc 5 and DM. So, without really much further ado, let's get talking to it. And just so you know, I'm not going to be harsh on any of these episodes. I mean, I might be just for shits and giggles, but I don't mean it. This show is very near and dear to my heart. I grew up watching Yu-Gi-Oh! Zale as a kid, young adult, and I, I fell in love with it. It actually what was what brought me into Yu-Gi-Oh! full-time. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters never did that for me. GX never did it. I was actually a little bit too young for 5Ds when it was originally airing. So, Zexel is what brought me in, and when it was playing on TV, it was playing the second half. Well, the end of the first half. So that's when things started getting good. And I admit, the show's a little slow, but I'll try to keep with its charms, you know? So, with all that out of the way, let's get started. So we got episode 1 titled in Japanese, I'm Katobingu, which if you don't know, that's Yuma's catchphrase in the original Japanese. Uh, just for a little clarification, I am watching this in Japanese because I haven't watched the entire thing in Japanese yet. How many times can I say Japanese in one sentence, am I right? So I am going to maybe make some comparisons. I wouldn't mind watching both Japanese and dub just to get a good comparison of the two. This one I just watched the original sub but we'll see how it goes. So the show opens like the same way you would have with any good or bad Yu-Gi-Oh protagonist. We have Yuma, he's late for school, he's running as fast as he can. Now right at the beginning of the episode we have the door. The door that's basically proclaiming, have this power, there is this power that exists, but to access it, you must give up the most important thing to you. And that, obviously, is going to change a lot throughout the show. Uh, there's probably going to be spoilers for further episodes since I already know what happens, but I feel like it would be great to talk about it. Late for school, he falls straight out of bed. As Yuma's running to work, he drops his deck, and he drops his deck all over the ground, where promptly a bunch of the trash robots come in and, like most people say about this show, say this is trash. Trash, 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 Yuma panics a little. He got that deck from his family, from his father, I believe. So, of course, he's got quite a bit of emotional attachment to it. And as he's running to school, we briefly see some of the recurring characters that we'll be seeing throughout the entire show, much to my dismay. We see Tetsuo and Koturi, and Tetsuo, his name in English, I believe is Brock, Koturi is Tori. I'm not going to say much on these two yet because they really are not doing anything at all right now, other than the good old... Uh, the good old Yu-Gi-Oh side chick, Yuma, Yuma, 
No. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna go very far into it. As most people will probably agree, yu gi oh Zexel, the side friend group, not the best. And honestly, Brock slash Tetsuo, he's kind of an asshole. And I never could really get in with him. I... Tori sort of grew on me just because she's a nice person and is very supportive of Yuma. She doesn't have to be a good duelist. She doesn't have to be important to the plot. She's just a good friend to him. But Brock is, well, he's kind of a dick. He, and I'll get to that later. Now, Yuma, he's kind of trash at everything. You watch him in school and he's doing all of these different sports. He's swimming. He's doing the high jump, which is vastly unrealistic, but who cares? And he's basically saying... I can do this. I'm gonna stick it to him. I'm gonna do all these things if you just keep practicing. But he has not a clue in the world of how to do any of these things. And everyone hates Yuma. Everyone does. I can't bring myself to hate him, though. He's dumb and naive, and he's a kid. He's a middle schooler. I mean, you look back at your 14-year-old years and tell me that you are not cringing at yourself. We have all evolved past the years 14 years old. And if you're 14 year old right now, first of all, ignore all the cuss words. Second of all, everything you are going to do, once you're older, you'll look back at it and cringe. And it might take some years. Like, trust me, a lot of the stuff I did when I was 14, it took me like a solid decade to really sit back and cringe at it. But that means you grew as a person. And Yuma does grow. Which is something that I absolutely love about his character. I cannot get behind people like Yugi. I cannot get, I definitely cannot get behind people like Judai, who just don't grow his characters. I mean, Judai's fun to watch. He's kind of dumb. Please don't hate me, Judai fangirls. And, I mean, Yugi's great. He's the king of games. He's the king of games. You can't replace him. Yusaku. He's got pretty colored hair. I'm not gonna say that Yuma is my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonist. Right here, there's probably gonna be a really weird cut because my breakfast had just arrived and I took probably a 10 minute recess. So I have to try and find my flow back and I'm in the middle of my notes and I don't know if I even really finished my thought. So after we have that school scene where Yuma is basically falling to his death 24-7, but totally gung-ho about it. We go to the courtyard, where he wants to be the best duelist in the world. He wants to be dual champion. Where have we seen that before? Judai. I did a whole uh, Judai Yuma comparison video. Can't remember what I said in, in it, but I'll link it somewhere over here, in case you ever want to watch it. I wouldn't want to watch it. I might redo it. Who knows? But anyway, um, Yuma goes. Th Yuma goes to the courtyard. He's accompanied by Kotori. That's when we meet our, basically our antagonist for the episode, and probably one of the best characters in the show. Anyone can agree. Shark. Right now, he's just going by Shark. We don't know any of his other names. He is an upperclassman, as you can see designated by his shirt. And he's dueling Tetsuo and completely and utterly whooping his ass. Like, we've only catched really the tail end of the duel. Now, Yuma, who's actually a good friend, goes and basically says, Why are you being mean? Basically, why are you being mean to him? Tetsuo lost. Fair and square. I mean, Shark didn't have to be a dick about it, but he kind of is a dick. He's the school bully, so what can you do? During that entire duel with Tetsuo and Shark, I just, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I had to root for Shark. Why? 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 Because I don't like Tetsuo. And it's going to be Tetsuo hating hours all up in this bitch. <clears throat> anyway. Yuma goes up and defends Tetsuo after Shark tries to take Tetsuo's deck. And basically, Shark pushes him back and says, Why the hell are you interfering? Glee tells Yuma that he doesn't have what it takes to be a dual champion. I forget if it was Yuma or Shark who challenged one another to a duel, but Shark broke Yuma's key, the key that his father gave him. He wears it, it's a chain around his neck, and he snapped the key which basically crushed Yuma for a good five minutes of the episode. You see Tetsuo talk to Yuma, basically telling him, hey, 
don't do this for me. Don't... In a much meaner way. I, I'm making him sound nice. He's not... He said it in a very mean way. But don't do this for me. It's not worth it. You're gonna get your ass whoop. And Yuma was like, no. No. M no. Motherfucker. This bitch broke my key. He broke my key. I have to duel him whether I like it or not. My parents gave me that key. And for some reason, his parents are not around. And we'll probably never see them again. Hey, anime. Feel bad for Yuma. Because Yuma's that kid who you kind of just beat up in the parking lot just for existing. He's small, he's dweeby, and he's got that energy as someone who just gets picked on all the time. And I, he'll probably maintain that energy for most of the entire show. He never really becomes popular or any of that sort of shit. And I think we get a third door cameo. Correct me if I'm wrong, I only wrote down some notes. But Yuma's spirit is pretty much crushed. And there's really not a whole lot that he can do. But he goes and he goes to the duel. And they have the duel basically on the side of a pier, if I remember correctly. Actually, no. They have the duel in a courtyard that if you actually look in Arc 5, that courtyard gets destroyed. So, that's a uh, fun little cameo, right? Yuma's deck doesn't make sense. It was built by his father. And it... This is not that good. Anyway, um, Yuma and Shark start dueling, and right away, you, Yuma's making a lot of really, really dumb errors. Like, he's not familiar with the game at all. Like, he probably had just prob read over his Yu-Gi-Oh handbook one or two times, except uh, with an ADHD mind while he was doing four other things. Yuma's basically getting his ass whooped. I'm not gonna play-by-play -play each of the monsters, but very easily just whooping his ass with basic things like equip spells and Yuma doesn't even know what he's doing. Uh, Yuma has a mid-duel existential crisis basically where Shark is telling him that he can't do anything for himself and then somewhere in the middle of this we have this dramatic moment and then Yuma's key reforms, the key that Shark had broken previously in the episode. This is where, this actually, this is where we get the third door cameo. And from there, we see an astral projection, <laughs> pun intended, of a white figure with snazzy earrings, spiky hair. And this will be the first instance that we see astral in the anime. But also, we get introduced to the concept of numbers in this. I didn't realize that they had put it in this early, but yeah. Shark was able to XC summon the Leviathan Dragon number 17, and he got possessed. Yuma and Astral look at each other, and basically, from here on out, it's time to duel. And I don't believe it's going to end well. That was the end of the episode. It was a basic episode, you know. Nothing crazy really happened. Nothing crazy is probably going to happen for a little while, but... You know, when you got mad kind of anxiety that I do, you rewatch shows and you put things together because it's a safe form of thinking. You know what's going to happen. You don't need to get that kind of emotional rise and I'm probably still going to cry at the ending. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, explanation of the episode and I will hope to see you again in about a week for the next episode. Peace out, my friends. Maya out.